ubiest of the tubiest. That's you and I, 50 plus. Today's going to be a real short one. I, I just, I, I, I was compelled to reach out to you guys one more time today um, because, you know, on Christmas Eve, we hit 100 subscribers. It's a week and a half later and we had 230. And I can't, I can't tell you how, how good that feels. A lot of people may not, you know, may not uh, think about it this way, but this is the way I see it. I make a video 15, 20 minutes long. For you to sit there and watch it for 15, 20 minutes, you have given me 20 minutes of your life you're never going to get back. For To me, I mean, it, it's a big deal. It's a big deal for you to think enough of me to listen to me run my mouth for 15 or 20 minutes. And I, 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 for the deepest part of my heart, I appreciate you. I truly do. And I hope that I never bring you irrelevant content. I hope that everything that I do will help you succeed or uh, get closer to your goal. That's my, my hope with these videos. Okay? So, thank you for real. Uh, I have a subscriber. He asked me, he says, 50, why come you just don't do comedy full time? And, uh, and that's because, uh, shit, you ain't made no money. It take a long time to make money uh, in, in comedy clubs because of the way it's structured. <clears throat> okay? So, uh, the way comedy clubs is structured, let's say, uh, most clubs they have two sets and uh the first set's like an hour and the last set might be like an hour 15 hour 20 minutes something like that right well the depending on how how long the set is for the headliner he will be number one the uh, if his set is only 30 minutes then they might do um three in front of him i mean sorry uh uh yeah three in front of him Okay, the guy who go on first is number four. Number four might get by three minutes, four minutes. Okay, he get off at and number uh, three come up there, and number three might get five to seven minutes, and he get off there, and then uh, the number two come up, and uh, he's going to fill in until they let him know, hey, it's time for you to get off so the headline can come, right? So if it goes from the guy who get the short period of time, ain't that funny. And so... You have to be able to work your way up from that four to the uh, to the uh, you know to the one guy. The one guy is the one that's making the money. And so the way I got started was I went to the comic club, and the comic show was supposed to start. I think it was seven o'clock. Seven o'clock show. I was sitting there waiting and waiting. And, you know, nobody doing anything. So I said, I get up there and do it. I'll make these food last. I feel it. So I just walked up on them folks' stage, grabbed the mic, and started talking trash. And everybody was rolling. And then the owner came up there, or the, uh, not the owner, but the, uh, the MC, the guy who was going to. Dude, and he came up there laughing. All right, man, we ready to go there. Okay. So the owner came up to me after the show was over and said, hey, I need your contact number, man. You are you crazy. I got, I got to get you up there. And I gave him my number, and sure enough, the following week, he called me. He said, hey, I got a guy that's not going to make it. Can you take a 10-minute uh, set? I said, hell yeah. I don't write comedy. I don't. I just get up there and I just talk a lot of trash. I find somebody to pick on, and then somebody else gonna start laughing at him. So I gotta start on him, and we just go around the room making fun of folks, and I do really well at it. But to do it full time, I, don't, I mean, I enjoy it, but it ain't gonna pay me enough money. 
when those them folks they not like y'all those folks are paying money for me to stand up there and act a fool you guys don't pay me anything but you still care about what i'm saying so it's a big difference i don't mind doing this but you know comedy is is, is just a piece of me i like doing like make people laugh and it's a good thing okay but that's the reason i don't do it full time it's basically money bro it takes too long to get to a a um it's a lot of funny folk in this world that they ain't all on tv and uh that's just just hard man just hard um so when i went to go pick up this last load the one i'm pulling right now when i went to go pick it up there's a walmart the distribution center I had to wait because they you got to go on appointment so i had to wait but anyway when i pull it when i back up to that dock they wasn't playing they load me up and got me on got me ready to go they weren't they were doing their thing so when i got done getting loaded i had to pull up and then get uh you know uh vertical loan in front of the the dock doors and everything so that somebody else can get in there so then i can close my doors put my lock on and go get my bills right so when I pulled out, I noticed this guy on the end, backing in, so I, yeah, whatever. And I, but I did notice him backing in while they was loading me. But I thought maybe this is the same company, different truck, right? So I got out, found where the load was. I I looked for where the the back of the of the load is and I look at the um the bill to find out how much it weighed but on my on the Qualcomm when I got the load it told me what it's supposed to be so I kind of had an idea because I didn't have the uh the bill yet so um it was supposed to be somewhere like 35,000 pounds so I looked and there was a bunch of uh ocean spray uh, uh juices and I, you count the panels the on of the side wall so on the inside and then you go to the outside and count so you can make sure that you're pretty even and then wherever that last pallet is that's in the back of your trailer you try to get your tandems right in between those okay and then you're gonna be pretty good with 35,000 pounds you can go to scales you should be good so anyways i close it up and then I kind of creeped up. This dude's still trying to fall. So I, I creeped up. And I stopped. I waited for a minute. He's still back. So I said, forget it. I'm going to go in there and get my bills. So I went there. Let the lady give me my bills. Destroyed their toilet. Came out. That dude's still trying to back in that hole. Bro, I lust. Look. It looked like you ever had two magnets both positive side and you trying to make them touch yeah yeah and this ain't happening that's how this dude was with that trailer man that trailer asked that trailer say i i'm not going to that dock door i don't care what that dude done i don't care how he turned the wheel the ass of that trailer was not going in that hole. That boat there looked like he trying to make love pushing rope his could not get it in couldn't do it so, dude, there's another guy waiting to get in there, too. He got pork on the side of him. He's, he, 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 you know, got his nose up. He's waiting for, to get in there, right? But he's standing outside the truck. I said, hey, man, how long that dude been? It's a 45 minutes. He said it before I could get it out. But it was. It was about that long. Cause I noticed him when they were still loading me. So, this dude, then the dude said, I don't know, man. That guy, it looked like. You know, he look he old enough to be driving for a while. I don't know why he can't get in there. I said, hell, maybe he ain't taking medication. Shit, I don't know. But he did look like he looked like, he looked like he was about my age, maybe older. So, uh, but he looked like he was, you know, not from America. So there may have been some language barriers, but I kept trying to say, hey, turn your wheel this way and pull forward. He turned the wheel the other way and back up. Everything 
And I would try to tell him to do the other guy say, hey, don't even worry about it. He ain't going to listen to you. Well, don't, I would try to help him for 45 minutes. So I said, damn. Got into my truck, and I waited for him to start bagging up, and I hurried up and passed him. Okay, so when I got past him, I noticed about four or five other guys on the other side of the truck standing on the sidewalk by the uh, shipping office. They all stand, well, they all folded and looked at him. I know they all having a conversation about how ridiculous this guy is. And he wasn't even close. I mean, if he was just barely missing it, this guy wasn't even close. He was way off. And he kept going way off. And he kept correcting it the wrong way. Everything that he did was wrong. This is no shit. This is no shit. This dude, let's say this is, my fingers is the lines, right? And then this part is the dock door, okay? This dude had an angle like this, going like this. So I tried to tell him to turn his cab this way. And then, you know, pull like this, straighten up, and then you have a better angle at it. That's what I was trying to get him to do. This dude did this him. He was like this. He turned like this, and then did this. I bullshit you not. He almost, he almost hit the goddamn shipping door. I mean, he couldn't get it in there, man. This dude was horrible, and he wouldn't listen. Hey, we all got to start somewhere. He might, just because he old dude don't mean that he been driving for a long time because goddamn obviously he didn't. That or he drunk as hell. But when we out there, you're young, just getting started, young and trucking, and you're just getting started, somebody trying to help you, take the help. Let them talk you through things and pay attention to what they're saying. And try to learn from it. Don't just be like this dude, man. That dude, he probably, it's six hours late. That dude probably still trying to get in that dock door right now. But what happened is the guy who was waiting to, to park, he said, I'm fixing to go tell it. So you're at Walmart. Just so you know, you're at Walmart. You got appointment time. Miss that appointment if you want to. You miss that appointment. Walmart will send you back where you come from. That's a fact. I sat there for six hours, and when I called my driver manager, I said, hey, I don't want to sit for six hours. Do you think they can take me early? She said, well, we're going to send my email. we got to go through corporate. But this is the deal. If you go over there and ask them, they might let you go. But be aware that this is how Walmart works. This is my driver manager. Tell me, this is how Walmart works. You go in there and you say, hey, uh, you know, I had an opening, so I got here a little early. I just want to let you know that I'm here. And if you guys can take me, then I'll just go early if you want me to. And they might say, yeah, sure, come on. No problem. Load you up and get you on the way. But then they're going to report it to corporate. And corporate going to fine Swift $500 and give them a service failure. Ain't that some shit. So I say, you know what? I can just sit here. I ain't, I ain't tripping. I ain't trying to get no service failure. You know, I don't know if they're going to charge it to me. Just charge it to Swift. But if you late, that's a service failure. And Walmart fines the shipping, the uh, the trucking company. Yeah, uh, excuse me. Yeah, I gotta hurry up and get up off here because I gotta, I gotta take me a horse bath and then go to bed. Um, I didn't stop at a uh, a truck stop of any sort today. I, I, I actually I'm parked in a Walmart parking lot. Not all Walmart, all Walmart's let you do that. You go on Trucker Pass and you can find a Walmart that allow overnight parking. You'll be good. Okay, guys, 15 minutes. I just really, really, really appreciate y'all. When you're learning, use two hands while you're learning. Close your mouth, open your eyes, open your ears. Peace, boop.